Described as the first Iranian vampire western, Iranian-American director Anna Lily Amrapour's A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night is a movie unafraid of testing the boundaries of genre, and equally determined in testing the oppressive boundaries of the modern Islamic Iranian regime. Taking on the conventions of classic vampire thrillers, A Girl reimagines the elements that classify and situate the genre in what Mark Fisher calls the weird and the eerie, and rebuilds them in the context of post-revolution Iran. The film cleverly adapts tales and creatures of Iranian myth and legend into characters, imagery and metaphors, the presence of which are evocative of the weird and eerie. Put into Fisher's words, the feeling that haunts a girl is a metaphysical one, one that which lies beyond standard perception, cognition and experience, evoking a feeling of strangeness or apprehension rather than fear. Fisher emphasises the weird and eerie's relation to the outside, both in a cognitive sense as beyond our comprehension and as a transcendental space, more readily in landscapes but partially emptied of the human. This transcendental space between the weird and the eerie is precisely the space in which a girl walks home alone at night exists within. While the emptiness of the landscape is unnerving, it is almost paradoxical. As Fisher explains, the sensation of the eerie occurs either where there is something present where there should be nothing, or there is nothing present where there should be something the latter applying to a girl, as the film politicises the uneasiness evoked by the absence of something, metamorphosizing its strangeness into the fear that permeates life in modern-day Iran, the fear of being watched, the all-seeing eye, the omnipresent judgement of the Islamic State, masking itself behind the name of God. When Amrapur was asked what inspired Bad City, the fictional space in which her seminal film is set, Amrapur explains that she saw it in a dream. This dream or vision that Amrapur had of Bad City must have taken the form of a nightmare. Emphasised by Amrapur's use of long shots and establishing shots, the lives of Bad City's inhabitants are framed as lonely and unfulfilled, all of whom indulge in sin as a means of coping and surviving. The suburban ghost town is a monochrome, concrete, empty landscape, silently ruled by death and haunted by the supernatural and the metaphysical. The film's central character and supernatural being is a vampire, played by Sheila Vand, who rides her skateboard through the empty streets of Bad City, silently hunting men who commit sins. Sins such as drug taking and dealing, enlistment or prostitution, violence against women and murder. The Chador clad vampire watches each sin from afar, then taunts her prey, before swooping in and killing each man as an act of justice. In this sense, the vampire is a feminist vigilante, symbolically killing the patriarchy of the Islamic State with each kill. The choice of a vampire as central in A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night holds a deeper cultural significance for Iran, beyond the recognisable figure in Western literature and cinema. When read in a mythic context that predates the Islamic State entirely, the striking image of the veiled vampire is not by accident, but instead intentionally resembles two creatures in Zoroastrian Iranian folktale, the Batak and Az. The Batak, or Nightmare in English, is a female vampire-like djinn that sits on the chest of victims as they sleep. Using this origin story, moments of imagery, of water, and even that of a fake nose, appear as intentional and connected. As well as the Batak, the vampire is also reminiscent of another mystic creature known as Ars, who is the embodiment of lust and greed. Ars is said to corrupt religious men, destroying their physical strength so they are unable to fulfil religious duties. Ours also takes the physical form, reminiscent to that of a vampire, dressed in a black veil from head to toes, and is accompanied by two lion-like demons, known as Sagriband, perhaps represented by the cat seen throughout the film. Ours, although most commonly depicted in the feminine form, still has some discrepancy around the physical form that it takes and it is believed that originally ours was perhaps hermaphroditic. Gender fluidity and transformation is also represented in the film in the form of the trans female figure, who is seen silently watching men in the street, as well as dancing, an illegal activity for women in Iran. All these motifs that reference folktale and creatures of the supernatural haunt all inhabitants of Bad City, and point towards an underlying metaphysical presence that goes unseen by the city's inhabitants revealing itself occasionally as a reminder that they are always being watched. An Islamic State-appointed critic, Ali Reza Pour Masood, describes the film as anti-Iranian and an insult to the Islamic-Iranian identity. 
However, Paul Masood, unsurprisingly, seems to have missed the moral irony of the Chador dressed vampire, as although she is the one partaking in killings, she is evidently not the enemy the film addresses. Paul Masood draws attention to the film's reoccurring imagery of the oil drills, highlighting the oil industry in Iran as one of the country's leading exports and the foundation for its economy and modern capitalism. Paul Masood interprets this as a criticism of the wealth of Iran not serving its people. As he states, the majority of people in Bad City are either poor or prostitutes. Ironically, in what is his criticism of the film, Paul Masood actually names exactly what a girl walks home alone at night and tends to criticise about the Islamic State. As Karl Marx stated in Das Kapital, Capital is dead labour, which, vampire-like, lives only by sucking living labour, and lives the more, the more it sucks. In this way, the oil drills are the vampiric extension of the Islamic State, sucking the oil and life of the country and its people. While A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night is clearly politically charged on the criticism of the Islamic State, through its use of the metaphysical and supernatural, it further begins to probe existentially at religion. The film acknowledges how religion can be exploited for control, but also asks whether, if beyond the cruelty and oppression of the Islamic regime, is there still a higher power for the Iranian people to look to and put their faith into? I do not read A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night as an anti-religion film, but rather as a film of hope, of transformation, disguised by a bleak appearance. A film that places the future in the hands of an unlikely hero, a vampire, and asks her to resurrect and rebuild what has already been killed.